Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's Dinosaur Reviews. We've got ourselves a brand new How Long Good release, and this one came out and arrived in such a fast amount of time. Like, I didn't even have a chance to actually even promote this release in a news video or anything. It was so unexpected because this wasn't a species that I recall being on that big How Long Good poster that they were advertising their upcoming species on. So I think that maybe that means we're just kind of going to get a mix of, you know, random figures and what we see remaining on that poster, which I believe is only like maybe three more Ceratopsians. But conveniently, we also have a Ceratopsian today because we've got the brand new Triceratops. And as you can see, as usual with How Long Good, we've got two different color variants, and this is in 135th scale. If you take a look here at the front of the packaging, you can see a nice shot of the Triceratops, how nice they look. Again, the species name, the scale, and the logo right there. And then if we turn it around, of course, the same thing pretty much on the other side. But looking up here at the top, you can see tons of other, I would actually say all herbivores that are out currently from How Long Good, which as you can see, there are a lot. Again, this line from How Long Good has easily been one of the best ever, in my opinion. I've never been so blown away with how many releases a company can pump out through the course of the year. I think How Long Good might take the cake as far as that goes when it comes to, you know, the sheer number of releases. So let's go ahead, pop these boxes open and check them out. So here are our Triceratops. There's the very first variant. And then we've also got this variant here. And I am absolutely floored, honestly, at how nice these look. These absolutely are some of the best Triceratops that are in existence. Like, man, are these good. The sculpts, of course, are fantastic. I expect no less from how long good... But these paint apps look so nice on these Triceratops. And I love how they've kind of painted them similarly, but at the same time kind of different. I think that's really neat because normally it's like the same patterning and everything, but different colors. Whereas this time even the patterning differs a little bit from each other, but they still sort of have like the same kind of look to the heads as far as the colors go. It's kind of hard to explain, but of course we'll go over it a little bit further right now with a closer look. So we'll begin with what I would say is my favorite of the two but I can't say for sure because they're both just so darn nice but we have the kind of like grayish variant it's like grays and blues and browns and all sorts of color but honestly just look at that head sculpt that is absolute gorgeous detail and paintwork when we get nice and close like look at the skin texture and just how vibrant it is and also how nice the paint apps just pop on this figure like Man, that has got to be the best painted Triceratops that I have in my collection. There's just so much very slight, subtle variation of color. How long good really went all out for this Triceratops. And man, it makes me really want to see a new updated version of the T-Rex released by them because... Just the thought of having an updated version of a T-Rex with color that could rival this next to it would be amazing. But as you can see, you've got really nice variations of blues. You've got little uh, spots of like brownish tones picking up. We've got darker browns that kind of spot and pattern through as you move up into the frill. You can even see almost like some purplish tones. We've got some reddish tones here as you move up closer to the nostrils. You can even see some really slight additions to the variation of color there in that area. Even some more really tiny little hints of browns moving along right there. We can see the beak is also sculpted very nicely. Features some nice kind of cracks and crevices and fine detail and nice texturing to it you can also see we've got a dark gray and then a light brown that kind of runs off of the tip of the beak which looks really good we can also see the nostrils are highlighted with a darker tone similar paintwork as we move up into the horns which you can see again start out with a very dark gray and then move to a nice brown and they also have a nice wash to them so it kind of gives them a little bit of a dirty look and you can really see that as you move up into these horns you can see how they've applied the wash to make sure all of that detail pops very nicely the cracks and crevices again uh, are really highlighted on this and you can even see more variation of color to the larger horns of our Triceratops as you move up you've got the dark gray then you move out to this very nice brown and then we actually have a lighter tone that overtakes the tips of the horns so again tons of color and then on top of that again the dark wash to give them that kind of dirty look which I really really like all of the transitions are super smooth and as you can see those horns are massive 
Moving up into the top of the head, you can see more dark grays. You can also see leading into the eye that the eye is painted really nicely with a yellow and a black pupil. Also has a nice gloss coat to it. And then as we move up into the frill, again, look at how nice the scales just pop in the frill. It looks so nice. As we move up, you can see more variation of color as we've got now browns and reds up here. And again, we continue to have like the bluish tones moving around the course of the frill. You also have a brown highlighting all of the little kind of uh, spikes and everything leading around the frill. And you can see moving over here again, you've got more reddish tones and everything picking up. The color on this is absolutely gorgeous. More really vibrant blues down here on the lower jaw. The paintwork of this is just so darn nice. But as we move back into the neck, you can see all sorts of skin wrinkles and folds as well as incredibly vibrant scale detail as we lead back. And then moving up here into the back of the neck, you can see a little bit more creasing to the skin. You can also see in the back of the frill, we've got more variations of brownish tones mixing with blues. Again, so much color. And then as we move along the back, you see a really cool striping effect that kind of runs through the back of the dinosaur. We've got like a dark blue striping and it's really smooth and naturally applied. We can see all sorts of osteoderms picking up as well as tons of variation to the scales. You can see tons more as far as like the osteoderms here on the side as well. And you can also see on top of the grayish tones, you've got brown brownish tones that are uh, you know showing up here and there through the course of the figure. I absolutely adore the coloration of this one. As you move down into the front leg again you have all sorts of variation to the sizes of the scales. You also have more of those darker blue tones moving down through the course of the leg. You've got a cluster of larger scales right there. And then you move down into the foot sculpt. We can see the toes are sculpted nicely. We've got some black for the nails with a nice gloss coat. You can see the same thing here for the rear foot. As you lead up into the stomach you can see how like the legs are kind of pressing into the stomach sort of scrunching up the skin there as well and uh, on top of the very nice variation of color we have you can actually see there is a dark wash present on this figure it's really subtle as far as its application i think it's most obvious down here on the underside but man look at how good the scale detail is even down here like wow the amount of detail and how vibrant it actually looks on the sculpt of this is incredible you can even see here on the insides of the legs that scale detail just pops moving back you can also see a cloaca here and you can see that as well again it's highlighted with a darker tone but as as you lead out here again you can see the uh, continuing of that patterning actually moving down into the leg you can also see the muscle definition here in the thigh again larger scales finer scales as you move back there toward the back of the thigh you can even see some pinkish tones showing up here again there's tons of paintwork on this we've got the knee and the front of the leg right there nice big bulging calf muscle and again the detail continues to look incredible the entire way through as you lead out into the tail you do still have that striping effect moving out and you can see the tail curves up there at the end which is a really nice little curve to the tail and if we take a look at the opposing side you're going to see pretty much the same thing of course on both sides as far as like the overall appearance and of course the paintwork and everything you can see the spinal column moving along the back of the triceratops as well as the hip bone and everything right there the biggest difference over here obviously would be the positioning of the legs as both legs are much further apart over here than what we see on the first side but uh, again you can see also another bigger view of the stomach here that kind of uh, bulging belly we have for our triceratops and you can also see some more of the pinkish tones showing up here in the lower part of the stomach as well again as you lead back you can see all sorts of really nice skin detail especially in this rear leg with the way that the leg is positioned and you know taking a step and everything you have all sorts of really nice skin folds and wrinkles and stuff in that area and again the tail out there but that is absolutely far and away one of if not the most beautiful triceratops i have but we've also got a different paint variant and of course the sculpt is exactly the same as the first version but we have way different colors the face though actually has kind of similar like patterning and stuff where we have like the spots and stripes and everything here but then you've got all sorts of really nice different variation of color you've got really vibrant greens you've got lighter greens darker greens you have like some tans as you move up into the snout you can see the uh, beak is painted now with a dark Dark brown and then a lighter brown as you head toward the tip also has a nice dark wash to the brown in the uh, beak as well to help highlight the detail in that area and then as you move up into the horns you can still see again that dark wash present same style of paintwork here 
kind of. The other one had like a dark gray rather than the dark brown that this one has, but it transitions out to a lighter brown and then transitions to a very light tone as you lead out toward the tips. And again, the dark wash helping to highlight all of the detail of the horns. Absolutely majestic paintwork there. Like, look at how smooth those transitions are in between those colors. And again, you've got the eye painted, but this time not with a yellow. This time it looks like we've got a green and again, a really nice gloss coat. You've got a variation of brown up here with again, the dark wash moving along the top of the head. And then as you move up into the frill, you have all kinds of variations of greens, reds, yellows, all sorts of color up here in the frill. Man, does this ever look good. You again have the paintwork of the lighter brown moving around the outer edge of the frill. And then again, you lead over here and uh, you can see just how nice the paintwork is and how many slight subtle variations of color are added to the head sculpt of this Triceratops. Honestly, I was so sold on the first one, I thought for sure that would be my favorite, but I don't know. I mean, it's a really tough call. This one, honestly, is just as beautiful. As you move back into the body, you see, again, all kinds of patterning, but the patterning and the way it's applied is very different compared to the other one. The other one had just kind of like a standard striping, whereas this one, the striping leading along the back kind of breaks up and leads out into all sorts of stripes and patterns through the course of the body which is quite a bit different and what's cool is you can see so you have like a yellowish brown in the body you've also got variations of greens like you can see just from here it's like a yellowish brown as we transition back it leads into a green and then you've got different uh, tones in the patterning as well as you've got darker and lighter shades of browns even blacks I can see in certain spots and as you move down it actually changes to dark green patterning leading into the front leg and again you have a really nice variation of color subtle variation of color just like with the other triceratops you have a darker tone as you lead down into the foot this time with a dark brown you've got the nails again painted with a black and then you move up and you have all kinds of really really subtle variations of color throughout even like back here you can see a brighter green right here and then a brownish tone here and then a different lighter shade of green right here like it's crazy how much slight variation of color has been added to these triceratops and as you move down into the foot again we lead down to that darker brown as you lead out into the tail you again have a striping effect but it's very different as far as the way it's applied compared to the other triceratops you've also got more pinkish tones and stuff showing up here on the underside you again have the cloaca present and then as you move back you can even see like a little area of a lighter tone in the middle of the stomach with more of the pinkish tones showing up here and there more pinks running up and under the lower jaw and throat and then again if you look at it from the opposing side you can see how absolutely incredible that paintwork is. They have done such an insanely good job on both of these Triceratops. These might be my favorite How Long Good releases so far. As far as a size goes on our Triceratops for a length, you're looking at a little over nine inches, heading toward nine and a quarter inches, but not quite. More like nine inches and an eighth, I would say or a little over 23 centimeters. And then for a height, the highest point would definitely be the tip of the horn, about five and a half inches or right around 14 centimeters for a size comparison. There is Mr. Papo T-Rex, the attack pack, Colovasaurus, Robert Muldoon, and the collect a human being next to our How Long Good Triceratops. And as you can see, it does have a pretty nice size to it. It's absolutely the largest Ceratopsian from How Long Good so far but also just generally, again, really nice looking there, especially in comparison to the Papo T-Rex as far as the size goes. And then for a comparison next to a few other How Long Good Ceratopsians, first of all, we have the Nisuto Ceratops, which as you can see is obviously a lot smaller. The quite recently released Xenoceratops as well, which is, again, quite a bit smaller. We've also got the Chasmosaurus, which, as expected, is a whole lot smaller. The Diabloceratops, which, again, these are fairly small Ceratopsians in comparison to the Triceratops. The biggest competition the Triceratops has is definitely this. Pentaceratops, as you can see, it's fairly similar in size with the Triceratops being just a little bit bigger. But again, just looking at those two together, it is crazy how good the How Long Good figures are. Like, they are easily some of my favorites to exist in this collecting community right now. I just get so hyped for anything new from How Long Good, and you can very clearly see why. But when it comes to some comparisons next to other Triceratops that are out on the market, first of all, we have the Eofauna, which you can see is a little bit smaller. 
We've also got the recently released recurve version, which as well is a little bit smaller. The Nanmu Triceratops, which is actually a little bit bigger than the Howlong Good version, but not by a whole lot. The Papo Triceratops, which is definitely pretty similar in size with the Howlong Good version being just a little bit bigger. And then finally, the newer version of the Triceratops from PNSO, which again is kind of similar in size, but just a little bit smaller. So these brand new How Long Good Triceratops are far and away two of the nicest Triceratops you will ever see. The sculpts of both are unbelievable. They really are, I would say, the most vibrant as far as the detail goes that I've seen from How Long Good yet. Like the uh, skin texture, the scale detail, it pops so nicely on the sculpt and is just so impressive in hand. Like, I really don't know if the video is even really going to do it justice. The detail on these is so impressive in person again like every individual scale is just so high quality on this on top of that you've got a nice pose for the triceratops as it kind of looks like it's just walking along nothing too overly dramatic or anything going on with it and you've got fantastic paintwork for both i really don't know if i could choose one over the other at this point that doesn't always happen i usually can pick a favorite when it comes to the how long good figures but these are both honestly masterpieces as far as the sculpt the paint everything but the paint jobs just include so much color like they're the type of paint job i would expect to get from like a high-end paleo artist somewhere not a factory released figure like it's just crazy how good the paint apps of both of these are and how much slight variation of color and on top of that just how vibrant the colors are on the figures and both again still look really natural but quite flashy at the same time so without a doubt these are huge recommendations from me these may be my new favorite how long good figures so far so if you are interested in grabbing them and adding them to your collection you can purchase them from lana time shop through the link that i will include in the description so make sure you check that link definitely pick these up and like comment and subscribe and i will see you in the next review thanks for watching